the Olympic Park, Beijing, China. Scene of heroic sports performances, world records, and glittering prizes. Where opportunities are seized and reputations forged. For Formula E, its moment is here and history beckons. After years of preparation and months of testing, the time was finally here to unload the cars in Beijing. With Formula E events only being one day in length, it's not only the teams that will be up against the tight schedule, it's the drivers as well. What a place and what a circuit to start on. We are here in Beijing in China, the capital of this magnificent country, around the Olympic Park that hosted the 2008 Olympic Games, just 20 minutes from the likes of Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City in downtown Beijing. There's a lot of 90 degree corners, there's a lot of chicanes, as is natural around a sort of grid system layout that they have here in China, but each chicane in each 90 degree corner brings its own different challenge that we'll get into a little bit later on. Three and a half kilometers and 25 laps await the drivers circling the bird's nest. It really is a spectacular venue. And there is Alejandro Agag, the CEO of Formula E, the man who has put this all together. And what a busy day and what a proud day this must be for him and everyone who's been involved with the Formula E project. Dario, it's, it's all come down to this and, and finally we're about to go racing. This is when it gets serious now. You know, there's a lot of talk about it. There's a lot of there was a lot of um, excitement and a lot of questions. Was it actually going to happen? And here we are. The lights are coming on, and for the first time, we go green in Beijing. And it's a very good start from Nico Prost by the looks of things. The app drivers are coming with him on the way down towards the first corner, but it's Prost who holds the lead into turn number one. Around the outside goes Nick Heidfeld. He's got past Karun Chanda because they flash past the exit of the first corner, and then up towards the left-hander of turn two. Frank Montani makes a move on his teammate Charles Peak, and Peak's going into the wall almost. Not quite. A bit of contact in the middle of the pack. Bruno Senna's out of the race. His front left tire has come off as they make their way now up towards the first chicane but a good start from Nico Prost he holds the lead the two Andretti cars almost coming together and it looks as though Bruno Senna is going to be out with that uh, broken front left as they wind their way now up towards turn six halfway around uh, the opening lap pretty much and Prost has done a good job to get away and there is Bruno Senna out of the race and what a shame for him he had troubles in qualifying which meant he couldn't set a lap time and now he is out on the opening lap Ugh, devastating for him. He's had a tough day. He had all the pace to to, uh, to really challenge. Troubles as well for Hope in Tongue at pit exit. Of course, this is all very new technology, very new cars to these teams. But in general, we've had a very clean start as we come around turn 19, back out onto the North National Stadium Road. And a whoa, big slide. I think that was Serbia getting it very, very sideways and crossed up coming into turn 19. He held it for the time being. But as we come through to complete the first lap, it's Nico Prost who is going to be in the lead of this race. As they turn through 19 and out onto the start, finish straight again. Nico Prost leads seven tenths of a second clear of Degrassi. Apt in third, Prost got away well. Sharp uh, Peak made a good start as well, but had really nowhere to go. Tried to look through the middle, but watch the uh, black and red Venturi car going around the outside of Karun Chandok at the first corner and then at the second corner well there's a few things to keep an eye on here's Montani going up the inside of Shao Peak which was very ambitious Bruno Senna just got caught on the inside there winding through the second chicane the bus stop and Montani is right up behind Jaime Agashwari they're all so close to one another aren't they so we're on board with Sam Bird and that is Montani trying to get past Agashwari going into the Huayong chicane and now he's going to look to the outside, to the inside, but Agashwari is covering his line. And Montani goes to the inside, locks up and gets past. And that's going to allow Sam Bird to get through as well on the exit of 19. Going side by side with his teammate down towards the left-hand hairpin. And Agashwari will have to uh, yield this position, surely. And this could compromise Shao Peak. And here comes Nelson Piquet Jr. up the inside. All trying that, that final corner is so tight. There's no way you can go through there side by it's side. It's so inviting to do it too in that heavy braking zone. And you think, OK, here we go. And then it tightens up in a hurry. It's good racing right now. Nico Prost has a second advantage. Here's Serbia going past Nelson Piquet Jr. into the first corner. Takuma Sato is involved as well. So that's Serbia taking 10th place away from the Brazilian. PK Jr. holds his nose on the inside. That could give Takuma Sato the advantage because he took more speed through that second corner as they come out onto Tianchun West Road. 
down towards the chicane, and Sato follows through then. And so Sato now takes 11, Serbia is in 10th, Nelson Pico goes from 10th to 12th in the space of two corners, but it's still Prost leading the way. Only a second ahead of Lucas de Grassi in second place. Third place, a further 1.6 seconds back, is Daniel App. There you can see the standings down at the bottom. And there you can see that's the percentage of uh, battery remaining. So we saw in the early stages they had 85%, they're now down to 63%. And when, obviously, you get approaching 0%, that's when you want to come in and, uh, and change your car. So we can see who's used more battery than others. Into the pits comes Nico Prost, the top three coming in. Montani decides, oh, I want to go in the pit lane as well. Ooh, he and dives in trouble. at the last minute. Might be in trouble for that. He was on the wrong side of the line. So that means Sam Bird moves into the lead of the race as the pit stops begin. It's about to get busy in there. At the uh, halfway point in the race, Sam Bird now is out in the lead. So now it's all about, well, it's a minimum pit stop time, but also they need to be careful about unsafe releases as well. That's going to be the thing. They, there'll be a man with a stopwatch there. You can see on the left-hand side, he'll tell them when is the appropriate time to leave the pits. But if there's cars coming, then they need to be careful. No, absolutely. And the guys have got this time now. They know how long it takes them to drive down there. They're obviously timing the whole uh, the, the pit stop, the, the car change, as it were. And, um, but a car coming out from a competitor at the wrong time could really mess things up for you here. And there's Nico Prost getting strapped in. He was in the lead of the race with Degrassi behind and Daniel App in third position. That was the order. Now we've got third and peak out there. It's Frank Montani getting strapped into his second machine. Out of the pits there. I think that was Nico Prost. As yep. we look at the pit lane exit, is Prost still out in with the advantage? Into the pits comes Catherine Legg. Here now That's is Prost. Nico Prost. He's got Nick Heidfeld behind him, and the app guys are coming out behind. So that's Lucas Degrassi coming out just behind Nick Heidfeld. Then it's going to be Frank Montani. Sam Bird is in the lead of the race. And is this going to be a different strategy, just one lap different perhaps to get a full power lap in on your in-lap? That's going to be very, very interesting to see. He's pushing like hell. But here's the thing now, if you pull out of your pit stall and then you slow down to do the minimum time mm. and hold the rest of the field up, you've uh, gained that's advantage. Interesting. That is, that's a very good point, actually, and that might be why the Venturi car was going a little slow in the hands of Nick Heidfeld, just trying to gain that track position as the cars filter their way out of the pit lane. Catherine Legg now heading out onto the circuit. Sam Bird comes in then to do his pit stop. So let's see where he comes out. He was running down in uh, sixth position when they came into the pits. And it'll be very interesting to see where he comes on the way out. And look at this, we're on board with Nelson Piquet Jr. right up behind Charles Peak as they come through the narrowest point on the circuit, down towards the left-hander of 14. And uh, Piquet is looking keen to get past. Isn't it great to see the car sliding around? Yeah. It's really entertaining to watch these cars on the circuit. A real challenge to deal with these not particularly grippy street circuits, not much aero, harder tyres. Look at the amount of speed PK carries through compared to Charles Peak as they head out now onto the straight towards turn 19. And uh, 1.47 uh, was the uh, time set by Nico Prost in the pit lane, which was the limit that they were set. So absolutely nailed it there, the, uh, the EDAM squad. Perfection from the EDAMs, guys. Well drilled, and uh, Jean-Paul Drio runs a tight ship there, and you can see that there. That must be difficult for them because they're right at the start of the pit lane, so they've got to judge it perfectly. Sebastian Buemi has been in and he basically went out, turned it up full chat and set the fastest lap and has come into the pits now. So it looks as though he will, at the moment as it stands, have the fastest uh, lap time, which will give him two points in the championship at least, but he's not going to get any more than that. No, that's all he could do. That was the maximum he could do there. So the, the quickest car there, Nick Heidfeld, 46.8, about a second behind uh, Boemi's fastest lap. This is Karun Chanduk and Sam Bird doing battle. Chanduk's been reeling him in over the past couple of laps. We go on board with the Indian coming towards turn 19. Is he feeling brave enough to look up the inside into 19? He does, but... Oh, Sam Bird's gone wide. That could give Chanduk the opportunity. Now down into the final corner of turn 20. Goes to the inside. Sam Bird's going to squeeze him. It really narrows down as we come up here towards this left-hander. But Chanduk gets through and is up into sixth place. 8.7 seconds covers the top seven cars at the end of this race. Yeah, it's closing up nicely here for the, for the fans at home watching. I bet Prost was wishing it wasn't right now. <laughs> Absolutely. As the action is watched in the 
Andretti Garage. Frank Montani running in fourth spot at the moment. Charles Peak has just done his personal best in the first sector, but he's six seconds behind Sam Bird. There's the order then on the left hand side of the screen. Prost, high cut, Degrassi Montani, apt, Chanuk, and Bird covered by 8.7 seconds with only four laps to go. Nerves in the Venturi pit, they know they could win the first ever Formula Race. And what an event it would be for Venturi, the, the team that's been co founded by Leonardo DiCaprio, the car manufacturer that hold the electric land speed record at 307 miles an hour. What a what a string to their bow it would be to win the first ever Formula E race. I think all these teams have worked so hard, haven't they, to get here, to get to this point that uh, it means it would mean a lot to any of them here, and you can see how much uh, how much it does. Fastest final sector of anyone throughout the whole race for Nick Heidfeld. So he is starting to push with three laps to go. Nico Frost up in front of him. And as you say, uh, Lucas de Grassi and Frank Montani have just dropped back a little bit from these two. So maybe these two can afford to get a little bit more power in these remaining laps. We've got laps 23, 24 and 25 to go here in Beijing. Just a million dollar more. question. Who's got the slightly more battery power left? That's who's going to be able to push it? Because as far as the, the, the handling of the cars and the, the, the performance of the drivers, they're very, very equal. It's who's just going to be able to turn it up just a wee bit enough to make that, uh, that pass or in Prost's case, stay ahead. And so the pressure as well is going to be worth looking at. <laughs> there, there's pressure as uh, the father watches on. Alain Prost, Prost four times Formula One world champion and the Venturi guys enjoyed watching uh, Prost under pressure. I think we've, who's ever seen that before? Alain Prost looking nervous. I don't think I've ever seen that in all those years I watched him racing. Flashing through along Huching Street down towards the Quechong chicane. Through the left, through the right and out again. That was close. Heidfeld there on the, the exit wall. That was, <laughs> I think he overextended a wee bit through the middle. The sun will set on one of these two drivers as the winner of the Formula E race. That might come down to the last corner of the last lap. You're setting them up the whole rest of the lap just to get close enough. All very neat and tidy, and they've, Heidfeld's got to push. They've done a brilliant job, these two, keeping the momentum up better than the other guys, using the, the momentum rather than using more battery power. In that, uh, you know, conserving energy is one thing, but they've been driving the hell out of the cars all day through the chicane. Two more corners to go now in the FIA Formula E race here in Beijing. There's still just six cents of a second between first and second, but it looks as though Nico Prost may just have enough. He comes through turn 19, one turn to go. Heidfeld's closing in as they come towards the final corner at turn 20. Is Heidfeld going to fancy a look into He's the last closing. corner of the race? Heidfeld goes to the inside line oh. and they make contact and they're both off. And that's an accident for Nick Heidfeld. He has gone off the circuit. The two of them come together in the final corner, which means Lucas Degrassi is going to take victory in the FIA Formula E race here in Beijing. A dramatic, dramatic end to the race as Nick Heidfeld is pitched into the air after contact with Nico Prost. The Venturi team watching on. And what a dramatic end as the cars come across the line. But a shake of the head from Alain Prost. There is Nico Prost out of the car. And he goes as if to say what happened there. Takuma Sato set the fastest lap of the race. And there is Nick Heidfeld clambering out of his Venturi car. It's good to see. It's a fantastic to see Nick Heidfeld climbing out. Not really the test we wanted. And I think we might have a bit of a uh, conversation here between these two. And Nick Heidfeld not impressed with that. It's Lucas Negrassi who wins the first ever FIA Formula E race. From myself, Jack Nichols, Dario Franchitti alongside me, Nicky Shields in the pits. We'll see you at the next round in Malaysia, Putrajaya in November. When the lightning strikes, let's stand together. When the moment comes, Let's stand as one. Let's start together. Let's start together. Let's start together. Let's start together. Let's.